there and welcome to TFI Card Tips. Please do click that subscribe button under the video if you want to see more videos like this one. And I'm not just saying that. Vault is my main area of expertise, but I haven't done many videos on this channel on Vault in the now like what 70 videos that I've done already because I honestly genuinely don't know if anyone wants to watch them. But if you get subscribed, it'll kind of let me know that you do. Right, so I'm not going to beat on at the start of this one too much because you've come here to basically be told how to install Vault, not to be lectured or listen to some random guy bang on about morals and how to be a perfect citizen of humanity. But with that being said, I do need to spend a couple of minutes giving a bit of an introduction. So whether or not you choose to listen to this bit is on you, it's up to you, but at least I put it out there to cover my ass and just scrub forward to the start of the action if you want to just crack on. Right, regardless of your own thoughts and feelings on the matter, regardless of any past experiences you've had, what you've been told, what you've heard, Vault is a data management solution and is responsible for the safekeeping of a company's lifeblood, its data, the stuff that it sells to make money to pay wages. Therefore, it needs to be handled and managed professionally. Most Vault horror stories that are out there in the wild are born out of an environment whereby Vault was never installed or implemented properly in the first place. So just don't be that guy who creates those stories and tries to do it himself and then blames Vault for being crap when it all hits the fan later on. So if you found your way to this video because you're looking to figure out how to install Vault into a professional workplace, I highly recommend that you just think long and hard about that. Vault does too much of an important job to be not done right. If you set it up wrong on day one, it can be extremely difficult and expensive to put it right later on. Problems will just snowball. Please get a quote from your CAD supplier. Just get a free quote for a Vault basic install and a bit of training. It's well worth the expense, but do be wary of CAD suppliers trying to inflate the time required to do this kind of a project. But a lot of you out there are just one-man bands or students or hobbyists working out of your house. Going to a CAD supplier is probably not an option. It's just out of the question. So this is for you. If, if you don't find a good enough video on this topic, let's face it, you're probably just gonna go ahead and do it yourself anyway. Finally, please note that this is for Vault Basic 2016 only. Do not attempt to do this for Vault Workgroup or Professional. This is for someone installing Vault Basic onto their desktop or laptop. And I'm gonna use Windows 7 as an example because that's still, as of today, the most common operating system in use. There are many variables that could possibly change during the install. There's different circumstances that can happen. There's different issues that can go wrong. And obviously I can't factor all of those into a single guide. If you've got any questions or anything does go wrong, I'll leave some links in the video description below, which you can go and check out. So without wasting any more of your time, here we go. As mentioned in the introduction, we're gonna be using Windows 7, and this is a virtual machine that you're looking at right here. That's why there's a bar running along the top, but don't worry too much about that. Right, I can't factor in every single CAD application. Obviously, that would take ages. So we're gonna use AutoCAD and an inventor as an example in this video. And you need to make sure that you've got them pre-installed. You need to make sure your CAD application is already installed before you do this. It doesn't need to be, but it does help massively. Right, the first thing we need to do, and the most one of the most challenging parts of this whole saga is where do you find the Vault installation files? And again, unfortunately, thanks Autodesk, but it kind of depends on what you've bought, which program you use. In most cases though, in most cases, you need to log into your Autodesk subscription site. So you go to Google, Google Autodesk subscription, and hopefully you should see this link come up, subscription services, when you click that, that'll take you to this page, click sign in now, put in your credentials, uh, that might be a stumbling block, assuming you're on subscription, which nowadays you kind of need to be. Uh, you need to log into your subscription center, get your login information, which you should have when you bought your license, if not get in touch with your CAD supplier. I can't help you with that, I'm sorry. Uh, but you log into the subscription site and that should take you to this page, which should be familiar, I hope, to most of you guys out there. You then click this link here, product enhancements. That'll take you to this page. <laughs> it's it's not easy, is it? This is not easy. All right, in here there's a load of shite, there's a load of gumph, but you wanna find Autodesk Vault Basic 2016. Click that, that'll take you to here. And then in here, you download the component which is applicable to your language. So we've got ENU for English, we've got, I'm assuming Chinese, I don't know, German, Spanish, French, blah, blah, blah. I'm using, obviously, I'm English, as you can tell by my ridiculous accent. I'm English, so I'm downloading these two files here. I've already got those downloaded. Once you have them downloaded, 
you want to extract them, right? So these are the two files here. Once they've, <laughs> Once they've extracted, you'll end up with these two folders here, which is VBS and VBC. That is Vault Basic Server and Vault Basic Client. And inside of these, you'll have the installation files for both programs, right? The first one you want to do, the first one you want to do is the Vault Basic Server. So go to the setup.exe. If you don't have, I like to refer to file extensions because there's not that many files that are named the same thing. Press, when you're in Windows Explorer, press Alt and T on the keyboard. Go to Folder Options, go to View, and then untick this one here, Hide Extensions for Known File Types, and that'll show you setup.exe. Right, once you've done that, right click and then select Run as Administrator. Again, you don't need to do this, but it just, you just might need to, and it, it doesn't do any harm to do this. So Run as Administrator. Once that pops up, you'll see the Installing IIS bar come up. And this might take a while. It's installing a, an, a, an essential Vault component which is needed to allow your PC to run as a Vault server. So this might take a couple of minutes. All right, when that's done, you'll be presented with this dialog box here. You want to then click Install and accept the license agreement, pick your region, click accept, click next. Right, in this box here, you want to select the down arrow and then you want, you, you don't have to configure these, but if I was you, I would just leave them as default. If you are just working on a desktop or a laptop, just leave all of this stuff as default. There are There is method and there is reasons why you would change the, the, the location of the databases, but if you're just working from home, there's not a great need to do that. So just leave all those at default. Uh, click the up arrow and then click install. What it's now going to do is run a system check. Now, this is where a lot of things can go wrong. And if you're installing Vault, this, which, which you are, obviously, this is where you can suddenly find yourself uh, in for a bad day. The pre-checks run a set of tests against your computer to make sure it's capable of running Vault Server. And if anything is wrong, if anything needs changed, it's going to present you with a dialog box with errors and warnings. You can ignore the warnings that pop up here. The warnings usually, it's just to tell you that a, an IIS set needs changed and tinkered with a little bit, uh, the IIS connection timeout, but hopefully you should have zero errors. If you do have errors, again, I cannot factor all of those into this video, um, but go across to the links that I've put in the description below and uh, ask some questions, check out the hyperlinks that are in the help files, they might be able to help you out there. Click continue and then let it run through and install the Vault Server application. Okay, once that's installed, and then when the dialog box pops up to say, do you want to, uh, do you want to launch the Vault Console, say run later, and then click OK. Then go to the, uh, go back to Google, and then do a search for uh, Autodesk support. Click the first link that comes up. Select Vault products. Go to downloads. And then when you've got the select version over here on the left hand side, obviously make sure that's set 2016 because that's what we're using. And then as of today, the, the most recent hotfix is cumulative hotfix one for 2016 service pack zero. But just look at the date stamps for the hotfixes in the service packs and just look for the, the most recent service pack and or hotfix that's available. Select it. And then download it. All right, once that's finished, just minimize your Internet Explorer session, extract the download that you've downloaded, and then you want to install the, well, first off, you want to install the server. You want to install the server file, click open, and then just follow the next, next, next prompts to install that hotfix, which shouldn't take too long. All right, once that's finished, click finish on that, and then you want to open up the data management console icon on the desktop. Right, it's going to give you this message here. It's going to say there's no vaults on the server. Do you want to create one now? Click yes. And then it's going to ask you to log in. At the moment, because this is a fresh install, the username is going to be administrator. The password is going to be blank. So just click OK. And then it's going to ask you to create a vault. So think about this carefully. Give the vault a name that you recognize something which is related to your company. So for me, for example, let's call this TFI CAD vault. And then for the file store location, again, there are ways of installing vaults so you can put the file store in a more 
accessible and more manageable region but because you're just somebody at home hopefully just leave the default file store location as default and then click OK. Click OK on the message that pops up and the first thing we're going to want to do is create a user account for you. So go to Tools, go to Administration, go to Users and then select Action. No, you want you want to click File, New, New User. For the first name, sort of, well, I'm not going to tell you what your name is, but you know, you know what I mean. So I'm going to say TFI and then card tips. And then for the username, so your first and your last name is your first and your last name. The username can be anything you want, but normally it's just, you know, first name dot surname, something like that. Give yourself a password. It, it, if it's just you, it probably doesn't matter. But if you're in a multi-user environment, you shouldn't be following this video. But if you're in a multi-user environment, you do need a password. For roles, give yourself administrator rights. And then for the vaults, select the vault that you want to log into, which is the one that we've just created. Ensure that's ticked and then click OK. And then that's your user account created. Shut that box down. Uh, there's nothing else in here that I really think we need to worry about. The, the one thing you could do, I suppose, is go to paging and then increase the paging size to uh, 1000. And I think that's all we need for now. All right, click close on that, expand this and then hit that little plus and you should see your vault there. And that should confirm that we've created the vault today, uh, who made it, where the file store is, and the size of the vault. And that's pretty much all we need to do in here for now. Right, the next thing we want to do is install the vault client. That's the program you use to access the vault and look inside the folders and stuff. So you want to go back to where you downloaded the, the two files from the Autodesk website, from the subscription site. And then you want to go to the VBC folder and then go to setup.exe in there and run as administrator. This install is pretty simple. Just click install. Again, a license agreement, accept that. Click next, click next. And in here, hit the more button, go to custom. You probably, it's up to you. If you've got bulk data to upload, I'm gonna, I might do a separate video on the autoloader, I might not. Um, but just leave all these three checked, it won't do any harm. And click install. Okay, once Vault Client Basic is installed, you want to finish that, and then go to the download folder for the updates and hotfixes that you downloaded earlier on, and then install any client patches and service packs that were included in those downloads. When they're done, finish that. Shut down any Windows Explorer dialogues that you've got open, because we won't need those anymore. And then you want to launch Vault Basic 2016, the client desktop shortcut. Login is the user account that we've just created. So you don't type in your first name and your last name. You've got to type in your username. So mine was tfi.cardtips. My password was blank. The server is going to be localhost. If you've installed the Vault Basic server on your laptop or PC, which is what I've recommended that you do, just leave the server as localhost. To ensure that the connectivity is working okay, rather than type in the name of the Vault, hit this little dot button here, and this will query your PC to make sure that the Vault services are working okay. And if they are, if everything's tickety-boo, you should see the Vault name listed in here. Click OK. Tick this to make sure that you don't have to do this every time you open the program, and then click OK, and that should log you straight into your vault. Right, once you're in, you should see this. Then maximize the window, and then we're gonna configure just a couple of things to make sure everything is working as intended and to best practice. So just expand the folders on the left-hand side. You should see you've got Vault Explorer dollar with the might search folders underneath. Go to Tools, Administration, and then Vault Settings. Tick Enforce Unique File Names. This is very important. The last thing you want is to be putting files into your vault that have the same name. Trust me, you don't want to be in that position, so tick that. If you're uploading data which you already have and you've got files which are the same name and there's no way of avoiding it or it's going to take a long time to fix it, you can untick this at any point. But as best practice, leave this ticked. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to File Explorer and then we're going to go to Computer and then C Drive and we're going to create the local workspace that Vault uses to deposit your files on your PC that your CAD applications temporarily work on whilst they're checked out to you. Now, the the local folder naming conventions that I'm going to use here are they're optional. 
but this is what I use and this is what I've implemented into to many businesses up and down the UK and they work absolutely fine and there is reasons why they are called what they're called but I'll not get into that so select new folder and the first folder we're going to create is called dollar working folder double click into that folder once you've created it and then create a new folder called engineering data the next thing we're going to do is if you're using inventor we're going to click, click a new folder and we're going to call this content center files and then we're going to create another folder called libraries this is only if you're using inventor okay go back into vault and then for the working folder setting select define click enforce consisting working folder click the little three dots button go to computer C and then select the dollar working folder click OK click OK click close go to file log out log back in and then you should see this message here that says the administrator set your working folder to that what this does is it just makes sure that that folder there inside vault maps across to this folder here on your PC it just makes sure everything is tally double okay inside vault all right the next thing we're going to do is make sure AutoCAD is working okay with the vault so we're going to go to AutoCAD on the desktop and we're going to launch that once AutoCAD's open just select start a new drawing and we're just going to create a temporary file and put it into the vault just to make sure everything's working okay so just draw an object doesn't matter what it is and shut down this design feed if you've got anything open like that and we're going, to need to, we're going to need to log into the vault through AutoCAD. Each CAD application has its own vault plugin which communicates with the vault and you need to establish a login session between that CAD application and vault. And there's always a number of different ways of doing that. Within AutoCAD, type XR and then press return. And this will bring up the References Manager which is a good interface between AutoCAD and vault. Right click inside here and then select Login. And you should see the familiar login dialog box, which should remember your settings from the Vault client. Tick automatically login next session and then click OK. Save your AutoCAD drawing. And we're going to browse to the C drive. And then you should see a dollar working folder. Hold down the left mouse button and drag that into the quick bar on the left hand side. Right click on that, go to properties and then rename this to Vault Workspace. This is optional, you don't have to do this bit. Click OK and then select that go into engineering data and then create a new folder rename that and then just call it something like AutoCAD data now this could be anything you could call this folder a project this could be a school project it could be anything that you're working on but this is going to be where we save our AutoCAD data and then change this to uh, test a CAD file this file is purely just to make sure that AutoCAD is working okay with the vault click Save right click on that file in the reference manager select check in and you should see this dialog box here select close and delete local copies that's again optional there is reasons why you would and wouldn't do that and then for a comment type first check-in click OK and that should providing everything is working OK send our AutoCAD file into the vault to verify that that's went into the vault OK go back across to your vault client hit refresh and you should see a little plus engineering data AutoCAD data and then there's your AutoCAD file inside the vault to make sure we can get that out of the vault go back across to AutoCAD and then select the open from vault button on the quick access toolbar at the top and then this should open up an interface into your vault where you can see engineering data AutoCAD data and then there's your test file please note that this is not your local workspace these are not folders and files on your C drive this is an interface into the vault itself double click test AutoCAD file click yes to check it out and then there's your AutoCAD file. That's brought the file out of the vault and it is now put it on your C drive. So if you're going to engineering data and AutoCAD data, there is the file on your computer. With a little tick to say that it's checked out to you. We can make a change to this. We can put another object in here. Save this. And then right click, check in. Close and delete the file. Just take that if you don't want to see this pop up ever again. And then click OK. And that should put the file back in the vault at its second version click refresh select the AutoCAD file and you should see version 1 and then version 2 with the two circles and everything's working fine because we said to AutoCAD shut that file and delete it from the C drive 
in AutoCAD data, the file should be gone from your C drive, but it will leave the folder there. So that's AutoCAD working great with the vault. That's how we do that. We're now gonna to go to Inventor and then make sure Inventor's set up with the vault. There is a little bit more to Inventor, so if you're done with this, thank you very much. However, if you need to set up Inventor, please do continue. So we're gonna double click the Inventor shortcut to load that up. Once Inventor's loaded up, there's a few things we need to go through here. So select the I at the top left, go to Vault Server, and then select Login. Again, use the same credentials that we've used in the Vault Client and in AutoCAD, the same user account, and then tick the box for automatically log in next session, and then okay. Right, we wanna to go to projects, and then we need to create a project file that interfaces with the vault. So select new, select new vault project, and then give your vault project a name that you recognize as being a vault project. So we're gonna select, uh, we're gonna type in TFI vault project. And then for the project workspace folder, click the three little dots button, and then browse to C, dollar working folder and put it in this folder. Very important that it's put in this folder here and then click finish. With that project file now created and ticked, you want to go into the options down below, leave the appearance and material libraries as default unless you've got your own to use and then expand workspace, right click and edit that. And then for the path, you want to say, you want to type in dot backslash engineering data and then press return. For the libraries, you want to right click and then add a path, and then that path will be dot backslash libraries. If you want to be anal about it, you can change the shortcut name to be libraries as well. For the folder options, you want to expand that, leave the design data and templates as default, and then right click on the content center files folder, edit that and type in dot backslash content center files. Scroll down a bit further, expand options, and for old versions to keep on save. This is entirely optional, but because Vault manages our old versions of files, we don't really need the local copies. However, they can come in handy now and again, but it's up to you. You can change that to zero so that Inventor doesn't create any old versions. That does help. That can help because sometimes Inventor does get its knickers in a twist with old versions, so that can be a help now and again. Right, click save click yes and then click done. We want to then go into the vault tab on Inventor. We want to select access and map folders. For the project root, you want to click edit and you want to select the dollar and then click okay. Now for the other two folders, we need to map our local folders in our workspace, these two folders over into vault, but we don't have folders for those yet. So you want to go back into the vault client. You want to right click on the dollar folder at the top and then select a new library folder. Call this content center files and then do the same thing right click new library folder and then call this libraries go back to inventor for the content center files select edit and then select that folder that we've just created click ok and then for libraries edit and then select libraries and then ok and then ok right that's pretty much it you want to then select new create a new file this again this is just a test dummy file to make sure inventor is talking okay with the vault once your file's created, just create a, a bit of geometry. It doesn't matter what you create. It's just so we can see the object inside Vault just to make sure everything's working okay. So I'm just gonna create just a very quick freeform model. And then save this into engineering data. And then you wanna make a new folder and we can call this inventor data. And then we can call this file test file, something like that. There's a number of different ways Inventor can liaise with the Vault as well, but the most common way is to go to the browser on the left-hand side at the moment and then select Vault, right-click on your file, and then choose Check In. This gives you a similar dialog box to what we saw in AutoCAD. Select Close Files and delete the work and copy. For the comment, type First Check In. This is gonna confirm that we're gonna put our test file into a new folder in Vault called Inventor Data underneath the Engineering Data folder, and at the same time, it's gonna put our project file into the Vault as well. Click OK. That'll send those files into the vault. Go back to Vault Client, hit refresh, and you should see your Inventor Data folder there with your test file. There it is. All good in the hood, right? Go back across to Inventor. To open a file out of the vault from Inventor, just for clarity, in our local folder, Inventor Data, the file is gone. It's no longer in our workspace. It's now been placed into the vault, so we need to access it from the vault. So similarly, what we can do is go to Inventor, open, open from vault, 
This should open up an interface into the vault folders where we can find engineering data, inventor data, and there's our test file inside vault. Click open. Yes, I do want to check it out. For the next prompt, click OK. And there's our file. If we go back to the vault plugin, you should see the test file is checked out to us. We can make a change to it. We can do, I don't know, anything. Doesn't really matter what we do at this point. Just make a quick geometry change. And Save that, go back to the Vault plugin, right click, check that in, and click OK. Go back across the Vault client, hit refresh, you should see two versions now, the first one, second version is the one with the hole in it. OK, that's pretty much it. You're now good to rock and roll with Vault Basic 2016, integrating with Inventor 2016 and AutoCAD 2016. There are other steps that you can do for a perfect vault basic implementation. For example, backing up your vault. I highly recommend that you back up your vault on a regular basis. Now you can create a script for that. That will be another video. If anybody does wanna see that, like I said, please do subscribe to the channel. Put a comment in the video, let me know what you wanna see. Um, but if you wanna do a manual backup, you can go over to the ADMS, which is the Autodesk Data Management Server, click Tools, Backup, and then select a backup path to back your vault up. Please do this on a daily basis. Because vault is installed on your local computer, not on a server like it should be, there are very many reasons why this could go wrong. Windows updates, other applications could corrupt or break your vault install. It's not common, but it can happen. So it's highly recommended that you back up your vault on a regular basis. So please do that. Click browse, pick a path, and then click OK to back up your vault and do it daily. But that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you very much. If you found this useful, like I said, please do subscribe. Please press like, put a comment down below. Um, but yeah, please do press like on the video. It does share it around and make sure other people who need to see this can find it easily. And yeah, thank you very much. Cheerio, bye.